everywhere he goes, whether it's a new town or a new bar, people just kind of give him a hard time and they rag on him despite the fact that he has great intentions. I'm curious if that's comparable to this sort of world, this culture of toxic fandom, where like if you make a movie, especially if you make a superhero movie, like you have great intentions, but there are always going to be a small yet vocal group of people there can kind of just be toxic. I understand you. Obviously, yes. Wow, it's like I, I hate whenever people always focus on they always focus on like this little small minority of angry boys. All of these angry boys, because the majority of people are not like this. They like the show. And also, sometimes if people give negative feedback on something, it's because maybe it wasn't very good. Saying, but when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for exactly. example. Exactly, yeah. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I and, just... and this is what happened, by the way, like people felt the same way with Henry Cavill as soon as he was going to be the Witcher. There was always skepticism about this until they actually saw him play the character and they're like, oh yeah, of course this is the Witcher, right? It could never be anybody else. Consider that passionate. Nerderotic.com Guess it's finally time I made a video on The Witcher because the bad news keeps coming and it gets worse. Ooh. But first, I'd like to welcome the Wait, hold up because the bad news Let keeps coming this. and it gets... Showrunner to inspire confidence in series. Okay, yeah. Attempts to inspire confidence. Oh, that, that sounds great. It's worse. But first, I'd like to welcome the over 630,000 of you joining me on Hi. this journey down the rabbit hole of common sense extremism. Before this video, you heard from the very popular actor, not adult pretender, Henry Cavill, and we will hear more of his wisdom later. Now, okay. let's recap the series of events that just happened over the last few months that put The Witcher firmly in DOA status. <laughs> There certainly has been a lot of cope around these parts lately, and it has been brilliant. And I'm not saying this is the best example, but it's just another one this year in the year of the Hollywood reckoning of get woke, go broke, and then beg your fans to still watch the show. Now, the first in these series of events comes from former Witcher writer Bo DeMeo. The Witcher former writer recalls staff actively mocking the source material. Bo I just... Oh my god. How is it that you have the easiest fucking job in the world? They literally wrote the script, they wrote the characters, they wrote the plot, they even said like this is kind of what the character is going to look like, this is how they're going to act. All you have to do is just go and, and, and put the same thing on the screen and it's done. And they just can't do it. DeMeo shed light on some of the lack of respect towards the Witcher's it's source crazy. material noticed by diehard fans in the show. The same diehard fans that were called the same things we have been called every the time. The racist underbelly of the Witcher. How Gamergate's rhetoric. That's right. You guys remember Gamergate? Yeah, me either. But actually, to be fair, I do remember it quite well. It was in 2014. A lot of people were uh, unhappy that um, uh, fucking these like big what would you call them? Like these big publications were giving favors quid pro quo for developers. And then somehow they were able to shift this into actually gamers are racist and that's why they don't like us giving biased reviews. Oh my fucking God. We legitimately criticize something. Although Andrzej Sapkowski, the mm -hmm. pride of Poland's The Witcher, didn't really gain worldwide recognition until yeah. CD Projekt Red's games started to become more popular, the latter were never meant to be a like-for-like -like recreation of the novels, even if there are still tons of references to them in the vast world of The Witcher 3. Mm -hmm. Netflix's series has set out to do something similar, following the book's story, but changing certain themes, moments, plot lines, and the overall personality of some characters to suit its needs. In other words, completely changing the source material. Those changes do require... Yeah, they want to respect the source material by changing the plot, the characters, the events, and um, the personalities of those characters. Yeah, I think that makes sense. You have to respect the work 
before you're allowed to add to its legacy, as writer Bo DeMeo commented true. during a recent Instagram Q&A session via Sci-Fi and Fantasy Gazette, something found lacking in The Witcher since some of the writers were not fans or actively dislike the books and games. It seems like if you actively don't like it, that's like... Bro, it's like who goes to like a, a, a pizza shop and they're like, bro, I fucking hate pizza. Oh, uh, hire me. Like, what's wrong with you? Why would you do this? Games even actively mocking the source material. It's a recipe for disaster yep. and bad morale. Perhaps it's no surprise then that within days of this article, we heard this. Liam Hensworth is replacing Henry Cavill for The Witcher season four. There is no replacing Henry Cavill in this series. It's dead. Oh, fuck. Interesting wording in your headline. While Liam Hensworth is indeed replacing Henry Cavill, it's because Henry Cavill left. And the timing couldn't have been worse for Netflix because all of this happened right before the big rollout of The Witcher prequel, Blood Origin. Never heard of it? Don't recognize this as The Witcher? I don't blame you because honestly, I couldn't tell the difference between this, Willow, The Rings of Power, and Wheel of Time. It just looks like a very diverse group. Yeah, it's just more fantasy bullshit. Like, you, you, what they're trying to do is they're trying to push out a, uh, looks like shit. Yeah, exactly. They fucked him for Superman. He isn't going to be Superman. Yeah. Uh, is diverse is bad. I think that the problem with the, uh, is that if diversity is put in for the nature of it being diversity, I think an example of this not being the case is, uh, Nick Fury in, uh, in the Marvel movies. Nick Fury is played by Samuel Jackson. Nobody ever says, oh, I don't like this guy. Like, oh, Nick Fury was white in the comics and now they're making him black? Bro, this shit is woke as fuck. I hate this. No, because he's being played by Samuel fucking Jackson. So if the main reason why you're putting an actor in a role is because of their gender or because of their skin color, it's very different than if you're putting them in the role because they're actually good for the role. Which, by the way, Samuel Jackson was fucking perfect as Nick Fury. Of no-name adult pretenders That's and rags. Difference. To be fair, it does have Michelle Yeoh, who has been great in some things and mm -hmm. awful in others. Every minute you remain here, your counselors must reorganize their tiny male brains to rationalize why it isn't them standing on the dais. And it's impossible it not, not to good. mention the change.org petition, which currently sits at 279,123 signatures. Netflix, you must keep Henry Cavill as The Witcher and replace the writers instead. They're never going to do this, by the way. Like, this is just like literally like a no shot situation. They're, they're never going to try to add him back in. I find it super unlikely it's just, yeah, to change positions, it's not going to happen. Let me sign it. It doesn't matter how many people sign these petitions. Netflix is just going to go through with what they go through with. The only way that you can really, if you don't like people taking fantasy series and, you know, butchering them for their own fucking reasons, then just don't watch them. That That's the real secret, is that they're going to stop making series like this if nobody likes them. But a better barometer of how the fans actually feel is the Blood Origin trailers that are currently on YouTube and getting ratioed into oblivion. Ooh. But even before this, there were whispers, hints, clues, signs, straight up portents that this was going to be an intersectional woke disaster. Writers from the Witcher Netflix series, we will have a cat mother, a patriarchy smasher in Haley Hall, a witch and etc. Sure looks promising, but I would say the biggest red- What the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, uh, 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 wait, what the, like, what are you doing? I, I don't understand how people, uh, how these people get in these positions, man. I really don't. I think it's because like these ideas are supposed, they're, these are supposed to be like the ideas, the, the right ideas. And so, Nobody ever wants to challenge these ideas because if you do, that means that you like hate women or something like this. So they've successfully taken any sort of dissent and turned it into like effectively like being a bad person. Yeah, it's a virtue signal. Well, what I'm saying is that like it works until it hits an audience. And that's what the problem is, is I think that a lot of people, it's like, it's like the emperor's new clothes. Nobody wants to say it 
but then whenever eventually it ends up in the hands of the audience, people don't like it and it doesn't do well. That's what the problem is. Flag came up prior to season two from Henry Cavill himself. The showrunner has a particular vision for the show and and for the characters in the show. And as you, I mean, I don't know if you've read the books, but the books, uh, certainly the first few, there's very much from a Geralt perspective. And so with the shift of the showrunner's vision where it's it's an ensemble cast more so than a singular lead, and and the perspective is is shifted to be almost more of a Cirilla Yennefer perspective, and so it's about finding finding my character's place within within that vision and making sure okay. that, that I yeah Geralt becomes a background character so we can hear about this other bullshit yeah it, it's nuts man I can't believe it. I'll be right back this. This one guy in chat's like, he doesn't like it not being all about him. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> the, sh the show is called The Witcher. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> not The Witcher and Friends. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, Henry Cavill is, uh, dude. What well, I mean, what... There's nothing else to describe the man other than Giga Chad. I mean, I, there's it's just I, what can you say? What can you really say about the guy? It's Jesus, so fucking Giga Chad. Anyway, what a day. Okay. Ugh. Where we at? It's got the loot goblin shirt. I'm chilling, man. I am chilling. I do everything I can to be as faithful to the source material as possible that I can be within the structure set out for me. Yeah. What I think he's really saying is that, like, basically they wanted to use his name and put him on the show and then relegate him to a background character for them to tell their personal versions of other characters in the, sh in the story. Like, I think that's probably what he's really saying here. It's, it's about being, it's about uh, finding, finding that place in there where I can, I can do both. I can help the showrunner realize their vision and also also bring everything I can from the books and from that that psychopathic like law loyalist nature of mine into my own personal character. Reminder, The Witcher was one of Henry Cavill's dream projects that he walked away from. So whatever spin you hear, we know the truth. It's out there, and damn it, he was trying to tell us. The first season of The Witcher was a massive success for the streaming yep. service, and season two is on the way relatively shortly. Well, it has since come out, and it wasn't a massive success. Last year, The Witcher showrunner Lauren Schmidt Hissridge made it clear that she has enough ideas for the show to run for another seven seasons. Well, I wonder if any of those include Geralt. It's not likely. Yeah. Now. While those plans seemed overly ambitious at the time, they certainly did, and they do now. Cavill has said he's good with that plan, but he wants to make sure that those in charge make one big promise. Speaking to The Hollywood Reporter, the actor, who is also the most recent iteration of Superman, said that he is willing to come back to The Witcher for its entire long run, as long as the showrunners continue making high-quality programming. Cavill said that they also need to make sure that the stories that are pumped out stay true to the vision of the author of The Witcher books, Andrzej Sapkowski. Then if that's probably not going to happen because all the writers want to use it. See, this is the problem, right? Is that people, they will take a show like this and they will use it as a platform to push their own narrative. This is a platform for them to push a certain message that they want to use the show to do. 
And the problem with this is that if you make your own series and you want to have your own series and have your own message to that series, that's totally fine. But what I think a lot of people don't like is whenever you have a show that has an established message, it has an established idea and like a world to it. And then you take that world, you put that in the background, and what you put there instead is your message. Because you're co-opting something that isn't yours, that you're taking over, and then changing it. That's what the issue is. Of course, The Witcher Season 2 came out right around Christmas, and it was completely forgettable. But who could forget the back and forth between Lauren Hisrich and Jeremy from the quartering where she was forced to bend the knee to the woke mm -hmm. mob for even talking to him. But that's not all. This brings us to the latest I article no from Tech that. Radar. Speaking okay. exclusively to Tech Radar at the Witcher Blood Origin UK junket, Hisrich said she sympathizes mm -hmm. with viewers over Cavill leaving the hit Netflix show. However, Hisrich simultaneously appealed to fans to stick with the TV series even if Cavill won't be a part of its cast for much longer. Of course, because she wants to keep her platform. His yeah, Rich's response comes five weeks after it was revealed the show's lead actor won't return as Geralt of Rivia after The Witcher Season 3, the fantasy series which returns in quarter two of 2023, and it's already DOA, will bring the curtain down on Cavill's reign with Liam Hemsworth, discount Hemsworth. I just, <laughs> God, what an asshole. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> oh, God. Just like, bro, this guy's catching strays just for taking a roll. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, listen, like, I don't know. Maybe he could be really good at it. I, I do think that it's, like, super jarring if you have the main actor for the show. It's like, if you think of The Witcher, you think of Geralt. You don't think of Yennefer or Ciri. You think of fucking Geralt. And you have the main guy who just... Oops, he's just, you know, we're just going to replace him and hey, let's just keep going. Like they did this in Game of Thrones. Oh, they did it with um fucking uh, Harry Potter. Uh, Dumbledore, the actor for Dumbledore got changed. It was totally fine because Dumbledore isn't Harry Potter. You know who the Witcher is? It's Geralt. Yeah, he died though? Well, what I'm saying is that it was not a... Like, as somebody who watched all the Harry Potter movies that came out o over time, and I'll use another one. Dario Naharis is another one in uh, Game of Thrones. They swapped his actor. It was totally fucking fine. Yeah, it was like, wait a second. But it's like, okay, all right, whatever. Just keep going. Because these are not really main characters. They're secondary characters. Brother of Marvel yeah. movie star Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, they, they recast the mountain three Cavill times. From season four onwards. I highly doubt there's going to be an onwards. Then the article once again brings up the change.org petition, which we just talked mm -hmm. about. The one that wants to keep Henry Cavill and sack the showrunners. And again, that is the single most logical decision you can make. It's the it only decision you should be making. I don't care what egos you have to bruise. I don't care what contracts you have to break. Your show was much more likely to survive with Henry Cavill and without Lauren Hisrich and her writing team now well, it has and it would have been weird like theoretically if liam hemsworth was playing Geralt the entire time and then he randomly left and now henry cavill is going to do it i mean this isn't doctor who it's the same guy it's, just, it's supposed to be the same exact character like that would have been weird too no chance but this is what happens when you hire for optics when you cast people in certain positions like showrunners writers or producers and you find out that they're not really qualified for the job it gets a little difficult to get rid of them because of the optics for her part yeah. Hisrich said she completely understands the fan anger leveled at her and the rest of the show's of creators i'm wondering if that's in reference to Bo DeMeo. however she also called on the witcher's fan base to continue supporting its cast and crew why give us a reason adding that failure to do so would be to the detriment of the upcoming spin-off blood origin and future seasons of the witcher's main series hate the break well yeah i mean that would make them not want to because didn't you just say that they hated the fucking the the prequel anyway so like isn't that kind of two birds with one stone take this to you sweetheart i mean that was you 
You and your writers drove off Henry Cavill. Mm -hmm. You and your writers drove off the fans by not respecting the source material. It's a big deal for us, too, Hisrich admitted when Tech Radar mentioned how fans had negatively responded to Cavill's impending departure. And that's the thing. There's a lot of talk and rumors about, and we fully understand why fans are going there. I can't. Yeah, of course. And help but think she means not only Henry Cavill leaving, but why he is leaving and it doesn't sound like it's a denial and that is the single most obvious reason why this entire staff should be fired right now you were given a potential franchise that could have gone on for years and you made it a feminist platform here's where the begging starts <laughs> what i will say is please come back for the witcher season three what you will ask i would say the first season if if i think about like was this a feminist platform i, I haven't seen the second one because i heard it was bad I don't really think so. I think it was pretty much fine, right? I, I mean, like, that that was about it. Like, I don't know. Was the second one like that? I have no idea. Is please come back for The Witcher Season 3 so that we can continue mm -hmm. to do this. So you're saying if we don't come back, we won't get a Witcher Season 4? Thanks for letting us know. Obviously, yeah. that Cavill's departure is huge news. But what I don't want to do is this has to stay about blood origin. The clan, Debara, Blood Origins showrunner, the cast and the crew, this is their time in the spotlight. Oh, well, it's not going to last very long. The Witcher Blood Origin includes a major change to series Bloodline. Lauren S. Hisrich reveals Netflix The Witcher Blood Origin features a major change to the lore. It appears The Witcher Blood Origin will add a new ancestor to series Bloodline, one also involved in the creation of the first Witcher and the conjunction of the spheres. So they're going to completely make this up and... As with all prequels to establish properties, Hollywood likes to do them so a girl could do it first, which already happened in the books, but it wasn't the right kind of girl. They had to correct that too. And once again, that is just nuts, man. Fuck them. And the thing is like, this is the good thing about being in a, in a free society is that if this kind of stuff comes out and people don't like it, they just don't have to watch the show. I do think that, like, for fantasy shows, it is especially, uh, like, corrosive to have, like, you know, you, you're like, oh, you're hiring for diversity reasons or something like this. The reason why it's so corrosive is that fantasy shows are built around, they're, they're built around escapism. So if every time you see a character, you know that character is there because of some sort of real life reason or something weird like that it breaks the immersion that somebody has with watching the show. And I think that's the worst thing that happens. AKA fantasy. Yeah, it's jarring. Exactly. That's ruining the series and telling your audience to keep watching because you have more content that ruins the series. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think it's, yeah. I don't think this is the argument they're going for by that logic. It's made up. So it doesn't matter, but clearly the fans don't want changes regardless of fictional IP. Of course they don't want changes. It's a fantasy IP, but the fantasy is the same. They want to have the fantasy IP that is reflected in the show. And also, I, I think that it, it goes to show that if you are making a bunch of changes to, like, casting and the way that things are going in terms of, like, who's playing what, it also probably assumes that you're probably going to do the same thing with the plot. Because there's clearly not a adhesion, adhesion to the actual story, and it's about filling some, some gap or filling some role. So, of course. No surprise we hear this. Originally announced mm -hmm. as a six-episode show, Blood Origin was cut yeah. down significantly. And I'm guessing if there's a Witcher Season 4, and that's a big if, it will be cut down significantly in budget and episode count. Yeah, a I would lot could that. happen between now and 2025. And for what it was, I liked Season 1 and defended it. It had so a did lot I. of what people liked. Yes. Geralt, monsters, and boobs. But it also has That's all it needed. It's like imagine like how easy that is. The guy, there's some fucking Polish guy, he just wrote down what to do. You've got this guy who really likes the character. That's in the bag. Everything else is taken care of and somehow you mess this up. Oh my god. Had plenty of cringe like this. Because I'm a girl and girls can't be witches. Which I think is probably the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I want more. I have to be more because I don't know what to do in Blaviken for the rest of my life except go to the There's nothing wrong with this. 
Because if you take this right here, what is the difference between what she's saying here and what Eowyn said to Aragorn in, uh, in Rohan? Nothing. Nothing is wrong with this. It is the exact same thing. The boring old market. <laughs> so the future tavern wench wants more. Maybe she could take a woman's studies course at the University of Blaviken. And who could forget Geralt yeah, spending... I, I, I don't think that that was not problematic to me at all. Because I think it makes sense. That, in my opinion, I thought that was a good... Like, and this is what I was saying, right? Is that every single manifestation of women being treated different because they're women or and not liking that or a story revolving around... A person and the fact that they are a woman is a, a core plot point this is not an issue this is i mean like bro like that's how they got the witch king right and so this it, it's not a it, it's not bad it's just the way the stories are told i i think that in general like there are very few things that are bad fundamentally and almost everything is usually bad in the way that it's told it's the execution of it yeah the entire final episode of the first season injured in the back of a horse cart. <laughs> but not to worry, because according to Lauren Hisrich, once Henry Cavill is gone, they're going to be much more canonical. God, that sounds familiar. Rings of Power Season 2, anyone? Bottom line, Season 2 was a disaster. It's been all downhill from there. Netflix should have fired this entire writing staff brought in new showrunners and made Henry happy, and they would have a successful series. Now... That's not happening. But if the show doesn't satisfy you, well, there's always The Witcher 4 from CD Projekt Red, right? My name is Piotr Nielubowicz. I'm a member of the board and CFO at CD Projekt. I'm also personally involved in a range of environmental, social, and government initiatives, ESG for short. You what? Huh? Okay, never mind. It looks like they're going to try to outdo The Last of Us Part 2. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another shining example of Hollywood looking for that mythical, modern audience now they didn't find the audience but they did find something else failure and now the witcher without henry cavill is gonna look just like blood origins or wheel of time or mm -hmm. willow or rings of power they're all this guy hates women uh, i think that again like and this is kind of what what the struggle is with this kind of stuff is that it's very hard to have an honest conversation about this because any conversation that you have you're either labeled a feminist like fucking SJW or an alt-right Nazi. Like you can't have an honest conversation about how casting choices can remove immersion if they're being done for some political social reason or something like this. It's like there's always these two extremes. It's like some of the things this guy has said I think are agreeable. Other parts, especially, I, I think that, you know, again... Like, I feel like I'm, like, 1,000% on point with, like, that, that conversation that that is straight up AON from, from Lord of the Rings. And she's a well-liked character, and this is totally fine. So I actually, yeah, I, I never thought that was a problem. And that was in the book, too. And I think that's fundamentally what it is, is that if you just follow the book, it'll be fine. Yeah, uh, protect a woman, yeah. But worse written. No, oh, I mean, of course, it, it's not as good as Tolkien. Tolkien, I mean, it doesn't have to be. It just has to be decent. That's all. If I play Dark and Darker yet, yeah, I'm going to play it pretty soon here. I'll watch like maybe one more thing, then we'll start playing. Okay, guys, I apologize it's taken so long. I've had a lot of things to mauled about today. Okay, this has been a big, this has been a fucking therapy session because I've wanted to talk about this shit for like fucking a week and I haven't had the chance to. They're changeable, and I want you to right think now. about this they're again taking, to bring up. They the took it down because they knew that I, they're trying to get it. They're trying to get it ready for me. That's that's why. Yeah. Go modern audience, and their never-ending quest to search for that audience and be different mm -hmm. by subverting cultural norms. They all look the same. And what's the big difference between the previously mentioned? fantasies and house of the dragon masculinity and the witcher just lost theirs and poor henry well, Cavill. And, and that's just also the truth is that a lot of the people that like watching these shows it's a bunch of dudes so it's the same thing i said with wow is like it, it, that that's why like I, I think like for example jojo's bizarre adventure yeah there's girls that watch the show i was shocked to see that i really was because I watched a lot of the show, and it's guys being dudes, and that's it. 
It's like occasionally there's a girl in the background and it's like, oh, I've got to protect her. And then you fucking, you, then you bring out the sword and it's a fucking battle against Dio, you know? And, and like, that's it. Have you seen a dude? So, yeah. And, and so it's like, I don't think there's a problem with that. I think that's fine. Was used once again by it's Netflix as a bait and switch. I yeah. hope that isn't the case with Argyle as well. The poor guy was born a decade or two too late because he should be the biggest star in Hollywood right now. And James Gunn, he should most definitely be Superman. Now, one of the reasons he's so popular is because he had the fans back in that opening. The reason why he's popular is because he is a fan of the content that he is portraying. It's the same reason why everybody liked it whenever Christopher Lee played Saruman. Because Christopher Lee read all the Tolkien books every year, and he would he was literal friends with Tolkien himself. So that's why. Well, let's see, there's a few other examples of this I can probably come up with. Um, uh, other actors that were like super into the role. Oh, fuck. Uh, Gandalf, uh, yeah, I mean, Gandalf was fucking great. Uh, Vin Diesel, yeah, Deadpool, that, yeah, that is such a good fucking example. Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool. Bro, that's why everybody loves it. It's because he loves the fucking character, the character is great, it's made for him, and it's just there. It, it, it's just, it's made for him, that's all there is to it. Uh, what's this here? Yeah, Johnny, again, Johnny Depp with, uh, fucking, uh, Jack Sparrow. Perfect. Because each one of these, the reason why the actors are so loved is because the actors love what they're doing. That's the difference. Clip, and I'll leave you with more cool Henry. Henry, tell us what your comfort film films are and, and why you chose them. Okay, comfort films, uh, Lord of the Rings extended. God fucking damn, man. How is he so perfect? Oh my god, how is he so- Bro, he just can't stop. Like, what the fuck, man? Oh my god, the extended edition? How is this possible? I don't- how... Oh my god. Dude, when god. you were gone, I said- Dude, when you went to the bathroom, I said, there's only what, one... Dude, this... there's only one word. It's Giga Chat. I it's... mean, how- There's nothing else you can say about the guy. I don't even know what to say, yeah. And it's like- And he doesn't have Twitter, he doesn't have social media or anything. He just- does Warhammer figurines and he has his own personal life that nobody really knows anything about. He acts in movies and then that's it. Dude. It's crazy. <laughs> How is it oh, possible? Oh, yes, Instagram. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it's I mean, just nuts. Okay, what are the other ones? Let me see this. Edition. And he played uh, WoW. I chose yeah. them because that's one of those. It's okay. Uh, oh, he's you know, going in about it too. It's, it's not even like he just mentioned it as like on, on a list. Oh my God! Do it for Christmas, or it's it's you're all cozy inside, and you know the rain is blowing sideways outside in London, and the house is nice and warm. Let's watch. You check your watch. Let's watch Lord of the Rings Extended Edition, <laughs> and and then you you just get into it, and it's such a even though you've watched the story a hundred times, bro. It, how the fuck was this made? Like, because you've got to think, like, this came out in 2001, so this CGI was in, like, probably 1999-2000. Like, it was in 2001 Fellowship came out. What the fuck, man? And then, like, you have... Oh, I went right to it. It's like, 1432, okay. You have this. Nationalize why it isn't them standing on the dais. <laughs> How?! What happened? Like, what is this? I don't understand. Wait, what'd you say? I didn't hear. I don't know. It's just some bullshit, right? What did I say or what'd she say? Never mind, never mind. Okay. Yeah, it's just... God. From two... Oh my God, man. It's such a... Even though you've watched the story a hundred times... It's so well done. It is a massive, massive movie experience. True. And and I love them. I love it. It's just so well put together, every single aspect of it. And you don't feel like you're watching, you know, someone who's just walked out of a costume shop. They look like real characters. And, and look at feel that. feel like you're watching. Bro, like, nobody ever, like, this is, again, and, and like, it was a real dude. 
it just it looks like a fucking orc, man. This dude looks like a goddamn orakai. Yeah. How is this? How did this happen? You know, someone who just walked out of a costume shop. They look like real characters. Nerderotic.com. Wow. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, tough shit. Which are writers, you made your own bed. See you in the next video. <laughs> God damn, man. Uh, it's an orc, six to eight hours of makeup every day. Well, I wish they'd have done that for the other ones. Maybe it would look good. That's what you get for fucking with CGI effects. Yeah, I, I mean, Cavill's making a Warhammer series now. Like, I am just, I'm so worried about a Warhammer series. As I said, because, like, the scope of Warhammer is just, like, so big. It's so expansive. It's so grandiose that it's, like, in mythology. Do you know how Athena came into being? She literally came out of Zeus's brain. Like, it just, she just popped the fuck out of his head. This is the lore in the actual, in, in Greek mythology. I, I mean, bro, uh, how do you, how do you make something like that? And how do you translate that onto like a movie and not have it be so abstract? It's unrelatable. Like Celestials is like, so it, it, like these massive fucking, like, you know, these like planet, uh, fucking protecting like intergalactic beings that are, you know, part of the Marvel universe and are like some formal, like some form of God pantheon. Like it just, how do you, how do you personify that? And it's not that you can't, by the way, because Hades proved that you can absolutely personify it. So I'm not saying that it's impossible. However, it's very, very hard. So I don't know. Have you seen Asardis? Yeah, I saw that. I saw all that. Yeah, do you like the Godzilla movies? I yes, I do. I love the Godzilla movies. Do you know why? Because they did what the fans wanted. So we're gonna have a uh, fucking uh, King Ghidorah. So he comes out of like a fucking like a oh no, Rodan. Rodan comes out of like a fucking like a volcano or some shit, right? And then he, they chase him into like in the middle of like the ocean and he fights King Ghidorah and then like he's doing lightning and shit and then Mecha Godzilla comes out and uh, you know G God Godzilla and King Kong have to beat the fuck out of him. It's like that's all we wanted. That's it. That, that's it. And it's the same with the Transformers movies. Like who is it? Michael Bay. Michael Bay. Transformers movies were fucking great. You know why? It's because he understood the audience. Who's the audience? 19-year-old guys. So they've got Megan Fox looking hot, and they've got really badass Transformers fighting with robotic fucking chainsaw swords. Problem solved. Give the audience what they want, and they're going to be happy. Yeah, 4 and 5 was shit. Yeah, but like 4 and 5, almost everything is shit. Like the first few were pretty fucking good, man. Old Transformers were great. Yeah, exactly, man. New Transformers going to be lit? I hope so. They've got to make a new Transformers every seven years because every seven years there's new seven-year-olds to buy all the toys. So, yeah, we're going to be getting Transformers movies forever.